Okay, we're talking about Package Manager, powering automatic updates and project browser to Drupal's easy composer future. Um, I am Ted Bowman, uh, work at Acquia, um, tech lead of automatic updates initiative and the layout builder and settings. What's up? When was that picture taken? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's red. Yesterday. But they're not wearing mics. Oh, okay. I pushed the magic button. Yeah. They handed that right to you. I know, I know. That was five minutes ago. Uh, are there two mics or just one? I think there's one. All right, you just crowd in, Adam, when yeah. you say something. Yeah. Can you turn off? Oh. Or you could, like, hold it. Um, switch on the top. It's... No. All right. All right. Is that just for the... Yeah, okay. Good. All right, so, oh, Adam. Oh, yeah, hi. Uh, my name's Adam. This I'm dog. <laughs> not my dog. It's my housemate's dog. She's a sweetie, though. And uh, yeah, I'm also on the Drupal Acceleration team at Acquia. I maintain the media system and a bunch of other core stuff. Um, staff software engineer, Fenaproxima, and Drupal.org. Hi. Okay. Yeah, so again, we're talking about package manager. And so what do what are we talking about when we talk about the easy composer future? Um, so we're going to be talking about two initiatives, the automatic updates and the project browser initiative. Um, so a few Drupal cons ago, um, the idea of the ambitious site builder was introduced. You know, traditionally Drupal has been very strong about people doing very powerful things through the browser. And this is sort of like returning to that idea in Drupal. Um, and the idea of com the composable core where you can have Drupal core, but then you can easily sort of add stuff to it. Um, and project browser and automatic updates are two big parts of that uh, idea. So Drupal is definitely already composable. We have, you know, modules, themes. Um, we use Composer. So it's Drupal itself is already composable, but you know, just not for everyone. Particularly depending on what skills you have. Um, Composer has been a pain point for a lot of people. So um, some parts have gotten more difficult over the years. Um, so automatic updates and Project Browser are both. Uh, looking towards uh, empowering the ambitious site builder. Um, the, the projects themselves both will need to run composer commands and they both will move things that are now command line tasks to the admin UI. Um, so automatic updates. Um, the current pro problem that it's trying to address or some of it is that maintenance burden is really high for Drupal sites. Um, many, many sites don't apply security updates, especially in a timely manner. And Composer has been painful for many uh, site builders and developers. Um, and automatic updates uh, will update Drupal core via Composer. Um, so this is actually the contrib module updates Drupal core via Composer. There's an experimental submodule that updates contrib projects too. Right now we have a stable version of 8x2.7 and we're targeted for Drupal core. I've taken off the minor release. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah we're, we're going to get into Drupal yeah. core in yeah. version 10 yeah. somewhere. Yeah, so, um, and so the 2.7 version is stable and we're working on the 3.x version as sort of like the thing that's going to go into core um, soon. And I'll sort of explain some of that later. Um, this is the UI, it's pretty simple. You know, you have a version that's installed and then this is the version that you're going to go to. Um, this is the experimental sub-module where you can update your contrib projects. Uh, again, this is experimental. So the experimental nature of this, like a lot of this, the actual updating of the contrib modules happens in the sub-module pack man package manager that we'll talk about. So that that part, you don't, is not really experimental and it's not really much harder to update contrib modules versus core as far as this composer is concerned. The more experimental part of this is that Drupal core has very strict BC standards and very strict standards of what can go into a patch release and what can go into a minor release. One thing. Yeah. For those who don't know what BC means, it means backwards compatibility. Yeah. yeah. Not breaking older stuff. Yeah. So basically, there's a lot more eyes on core updates to make sure that they are as stable as they can possibly be. But for contrib, you don't know, like so I'm sure some contrib projects are very strict, some are less strict. So 
Um, the idea of like releasing contrib updates now is probably more likely to break sites, probably more just for the fact of any contrib update, out, even outside of a, directly via composer, could also break your site. Uh, all right, so let's talk about Project Browser. Um, so the current problem now is that you know searching for modules and themes requires leaving your Drupal site, um, so it's hard to discover useful and compatible modules and themes for your current site. And again, it shares the um, composer uh, pain point of installing those modules. Um, so. Uh, project Browser will let you search for projects through the UI and will only show you modules that are compatible with your current site. Um, it has better tools for filtering, finding and filtering modules um, like uh, categories and then you can easily search for sites that have uh, projects that have security coverage or are currently maintained. Um, and then it's going to install those projects via Composer behind the scenes. This is the current UI where you have some pre-selected filters on top, maintained and security coverage. You have uh, the categories of modules, which I know they're doing a lot of work to trim these down. Um, and they've done a lot of work to sort of make the descriptions of the modules much more useful. So that in a, you get a sort of short description of what it might do for you and to add these nice logos. Um, so they share the same problem, automatic updates in Project Browser that can, Composer is a pain point. It's not painful, obviously, for everybody, and it's really um, useful. I, I like Composer, but it has been, you know, it has been painful for some site builders, some developers. I like Composer too, but that doesn't mean it's not painful. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, um, so they both need to run Composer commands safely, and they both need to run them in a standard way, in the sense that. Um, if you use automatic updates to update Drupal core or if you use Project Browser to install modules, you should be able to install the uninstall Project Browser and automatic updates. And you know, you don't, you're not dependent on them moving forward. Or it could be that some people on your project have multiple developers, maybe they use Composer directly through the command line to install modules and then some people use Project Browser. Um, there's nothing special after the fact about how project browser installs modules. So that's what I sort of mean by a standard way. Um, so package manager is basically what is the sub-module that both project browser and automatic updates will use. It's a API only Drupal module, there's no UI. Um, it safely performs composer operations. It has Drupal specific security checks and sort of sanity checks. Currently, it's a sub-module of the automatic updates module. That's just kind of because we started working on this first, so we needed it to be somewhere. Um, but in core, it'll be a, a separate module that both of them will be dependent on. Uh, so if we look at this, right now, you have automatic updates. In the middle is package manager. And then there's a library con called Composers, Composer Stager, which we'll go over in a second. Um, so. In core, it would be like this, automatic updates and project browsers are both are dependent on package manager, and then they both would uh, be dependent on a third party library called Composer Stager. Um, so let's look at Composer Stager first. This is sort of the most low level thing. Um, it's a PHP library, it's not Drupal specific at all, and it runs Composer commands in a staged copy of your code base. Um, so the goal was to sort of safely perform uh, composer operations on the live version of your site with as little downtime as possible. It copies all the composer managed code into a staged copy elsewhere, performs the, cop the operation, composer operations there, and then merges the changes back to your live site. So basically, actually, as far as composer stager is concerned, it's not necessarily a website, it's just a composer project. Um, so there's four stages. I'm, we're going to use the package manager uh, names for this. The composer stage is quite slightly different, but the same stages. We have create, where we have your active site and we copy the code base to the stage copy. Um, and then we run one or more composer commands in that stage copy. And then we apply those changes back to your site. So the last step or apply is not a composer um, operation per se, it's more just copying uh, stuff over. And so part of that is that in the 
automatic updates in project browser use case that will have the minimum time possible of your site where we're actually copying code. We're not performing uh, composer operations directly on your site. That's right. <laughs> Uh, and then afterwards, we destroy the staged copy because you don't need it anymore. Okay, so let's look at package manager. Um, so it automatic updates example of package manager. We're going to look at the update process, actual behind the scenes footage. Um, so we have your Drupal site, and the world is is looking at it. You're on 9.3.11 because you're way out of date. Uh, we create a copy of your site of just your code base. Um, and then we run some composer operations, and now you're on 9.3.12. And you're yeah. still way out of date. Yay! Hey. Uh, at some point, I'm going to have to stop using this animation because I've used it for a while. Um, and then we copy, well, we put your site into maintenance mode, and then we copy 9.3.12 over to your live site, and then we destroy the staged copy. So the idea is basically we have a brief period where we're taking your site uh, into maintenance mode so we can copy the code over so people aren't accessing it while we are, um, while we are changing live code. Um, so uh, package manager works with any composer package. It's not, um, it's Drupal specific in that it's a Drupal module, but it's not specific in the operations that it does. Um, so in the example that we had before, basically any composer package, not necessarily, you can have it, yeah, update or install anything. And then any version in automatic updates, we're very strict about like what versions of update, of Drupal core you can update from and to. Um, and a project browser too probably has rules around that. Um, so what is package manager going to do for me? Basically, you know, why not just use composer stager directly? So we have a lot of sort of like goodies inside package manager. Uh, a lot of things that you would have to deal with if you were trying to use these cop, uh, if you're trying to do these composer operations. Um, one of the first things is ignored paths. So if we're going to stage a copy of your site, um, we obviously don't want to copy o over all of your files that you have uploaded. One, because it would take a long time. Two, because there could be new uploads in the time that you're doing the update. Also, the fact that it would just take longer and use more disk space, and we don't need it. Composer yeah. doesn't care about yeah. those files ever. Yeah. And Git directories, um, we don't copy those, except actually in the certain case where those Git directories are part of Composer packages. Um, and if you're using, like, say, a SQLite database, um, we don't copy those files over because obviously that database is going to be updated during the while you're up, updating your site. Um, so basically, we keep the temporary staged copy of the site as non-crufty as possible, with just just the stuff that we need to update. Yeah, and there's a a bit system around those too that you can say, okay, exclude these particular paths also. Um, we have general safeguards like using HTTPS for Composer itself and for fetching the update XML from Drupal.org, which is basically where we get information about what versions of particular Drupal modules or core are secure. Um, we have integrations with the Composer Patches, a library that basically makes it so that we fail if you have Composer Patches that don't apply correctly. Um, and um, we make sure that you don't have any pending database updates on your site, so you're not trying to like update to Drupal, a new version of Drupal Core when you actually haven't run the previous, you haven't uh, gone to update.php uh, from the previous update that you did. Um, we have a lot, a lot more safeguards. One example is um, preventing simultaneous changes. So the idea is that you don't want to be a package manager, start to, uh, Cop, make a staged copy of your site, and then somebody in the meantime is also running composer commands directly from the command line, and then you try to apply those stages, those changes to your site where you don't really know what happened in between. So we'll give an example of like how our event system works to, to how we prevent this kind of stuff in a bit. Um, 
Oh, yeah. And the other thing about preventing simultaneous changes is that any module that uses Package Manager um, will sort of automatically get opt-in into this. So like if automatic updates is starting and then somebody also is like, oh, I also want to install a module via uh, Project Browser, you can't do those things at the same time because you're dealing with the same code base. Basically, there's only one staged copy of the site at any time ever. So if Automatic Updates has a staged copy, it's working on Project Browser, cannot go create another staged copy and work on that, because that would be confusing and bad. So uh, we don't do that. Yeah, and so any module that wants to be have Package Manager as a dependency to do whatever composer operations you want, then you're automatically sort of opted into this um, system. Um, it prevents insecure installs. So basically, say you're installing uh, Project X on Drupal, but then any time that you do a composer operation to update something, uh, you can have a side effect of updating some other project that you didn't intentionally want to update, but that's how composer works, or it could add new dependencies. So we check with both the thing that you're updating is secure, and then we check with any, any Drupal projects that have changed in that staged copy we go out and we fetch the Drupal.org update XML to say, okay, is this also secure? Um, and then if not, then we say, okay, you just you can't complete this operation. Basically, we will not let you bring insecure stuff into your site, no matter how hard you try. <laughs> what, what if the version you're already on is insecure? Well, then to, we very much recommend you use Package Manager to get off of it. Oh, you mean to go from one insecure version to another? Yeah, because you might have fewer in insecurities. Yeah, in if, you, if you have 125 of Project Y installed already, I, I'm, I'm assuming that it would still let you. Like, I, you, you wouldn't want the fact that you have, it, if there's no security update available, you wouldn't want the fact that you, you wouldn't want to either force a downgrade or prevent all other yeah. site updates just because. Oh, so no, I don't think it would do that. it's only if it changes. Okay, but yeah. yeah, right now we don't allow you to go from one insecure version to another. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I guess we... You can stay on an insecure version. Like, right, right, I guess, yeah, I mean... But I think there's always the workaround that you can, you can run commands manually. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and run the commands. Anyway, it, it's just an interesting question, like... Yeah. Like, oh, the, the latest insecurity is, like, you know, it exposes your name, and the previous insecurity was, you know... Uh, RCE. SQL injection, right? But, it, <laughs> but we don't have a really way to tell right, that. Have a way to tell it could be reversed. Sure. It could be the new one is worse. Right. Yeah. So. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Curious. Curious. Um, it might be useful to have a, like a, a manual like override, override option <laughs> for at least for people using on one. Yeah. I mean. I would. I would try to add UI. I mean, definitely somebody could build a contrib module that takes this the event subscriber away and stops checking. Yeah, there, <laughs> there are ways. <laughs> um, so, and then we also prevent uh, conflicts with code that is not managed by Composer. Um, so some people will have projects that are not installed via Composer. Um, and then also people might have folders where new Composer packages might go if you didn't know that. Um, so one example is if you have like, uh, let's see if I talk about this more. Oh, if you have, um, C tools and you actually just maybe get cloned it in there for some reason. And then you're installing a project via package manager and you're not installing C tools, but maybe you didn't know that that module is dependent on C tools. So depending on where you clone C tools, it could either overwrite it or it could now you have two copies of C tools on the site. So basically we make sure that you don't have any new duplicates of projects on your site in the staged copy and we don't wipe out any, any new composer packages don't wipe out existing folders. An example of that, let's say you have a folder called notes under contrib as to why you installed all these modules. And then you install the web form notes module and it has a dependency on the notes module and that wipes out your notes folder. Um, so we don't know what the notes folder is if it's not managed by composer. So we just stop you from ever overriding that kind of situation. Um, so the life cycle of package manager, we have create, which is the copy of the site, require, which is in our case, you know, doing a update or add operation, then applying the stages, uh, changes to your site, and then destroy. And 
all of those um, stages have events, and we have pre and we have post events. Um, and any of the, so pre-create through pre-destroy, and then pre uh, post-create to post-destroy. In any of the pre-events, we have a validation system in, in the event where you can add va either validation errors or warning, I guess it's actually only errors in these. Yeah. And you can basically say like, hey, something went wrong here, or I'm not ready to do whatever operation you say you're about to do. Um, and if any of those subscribers flag errors, then we basically stop the operation. We can't do that in post because the operation obviously has already happened. Yeah. Um, and so the idea is like one of the most important events is pre-apply because it's your last point to say, okay, I'm about to replace the code on your site. Is there anybody who has an objection to whatever is in the staged copy? All the pre-events are basically package managers saying, speak now or forever hold your peace. Yeah. That's how I think of it. Uh, the staged life cycle, um, the stage instance, that's just a bunch of files on the file system. There's no web services on there, there's no database, it's just manipulation of the files. But yeah, it's basically your, what we're trying to, we're trying to narrow it down to just your composer managed code. So the idea of like excluding your database, your files or whatever, so it's not exact copy of your site, it's a sort of trimmed down copy of your site. Just the, I guess, call the code. <laughs> yeah. It's the code that, I mean, I guess there could be other things that is code that's not managed by composer on your site, yeah. Okay, so you still have you still you're not gonna and still until it comes back, yeah. you're not gonna know if the site actually is still gonna work. Yeah, you still gotta run your regression tests on the, the data that or the files that were pushed back. Yeah, I mean somebody could write a contrib module that runs tests on the yeah. staged copy. Is but some tests might work, like PHP unit tests could potentially work. But you know, we're not doing any of that for you. There are you know, there are events to where you could tap in and do whatever you want to that stage copy. Sure. But you can't really bootstrap like the Drupal site in that stage copy, even if we copy the files over, because um, anytime you bootstrap Drupal, there's a potential that it could write, it's gonna write to the database. So if it does that, then you can't really reverse, because now you've already loaded. You've already told, you've already yeah, yeah. The database. yeah, so basically like Drupal's not great on downgrading and we don't, solve that problem for you. And this this is also sort of like a lightweight version. It's not it's not a substitute for a deployment and CI. Yeah, as well. yeah. Um, it, it's, and, and there's like API events that you can plug into your own CI deployment system so that you can do this task and then you know run your test suite or whatever and then deploy. Yeah. Okay. So in a CI C D world you would prop a developer would just do it on his own machine and go through this process, it wouldn't be built into your CI CD. Um, I mean, because you, you get the results, check them back, bring your local machine, test the test it a little bit, swap test, and then check, I mean, check it, those in and then begin your CI. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you had a really complex system, you probably wouldn't use this exact, I mean, okay. you could. Yeah. yeah, so question, this requires PHP to be able to write the code base. PHP what? To be able to yes, we'll get to the yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, so it's definitely so, there's no real way around that, right? Like really, only for people that have that what we would generally consider somewhat insecure. Yeah, concept, right? yeah. So the, a little bit about that later. I mean, basically, package manager automatic updates because it's by nature. If you if the thing we eventually want is unattended updates on production that is only for a subset of sites who have a writable file system. Right. Um, you know, people who have a deployment system to push out updates probably would not use that part of Package Manager. Sure. But um, they might use other parts of it locally. It also depends on what type of uh, guidance you have. Like you can't, like in the healthcare business, you yeah. can't just... Yeah, sure, yeah. Let's just change the production. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Maybe mom and pop's yeah. garage yeah. website. Yeah. Yeah. It might be a different story. Yeah, well, I was partly curious if, yeah, is there, is there a way that like once you've staged it and you're ready to write it back, you could essentially have a different, is there a way to have a different user account execute the, the copy back? Yeah, Maybe. Um, 
We are not doing that, in, or the, there's not a plan to do that in core, but it, sure. it would be possible, yeah. I mean, there, I mean, also you could run cron as a different user to run unattended updates in that in that case that has yeah. you know, if you had cron running as a different user and cron was running autom and you had automatic updates enabled, if if the the file system is writable via that user, then it would still be possible to do it. Yeah, okay. but it's not going to. I don't think like the automated cron that comes with core is not going to work. Sure. In that case, yeah. But if you had a, a some. Uh, even even cPanel, I think you can set up cron. To, I'm not sure as you can run a different user, but you might. Yeah, not a different user. But yeah. I mean, well, that's actually yeah, maybe worth documenting. Yeah. Um, so if does it support patches? What's that? Patches. Uh, like composer patches. Yeah. Uh, we have minimal support for that. Basically, we we disallow a lot of composer plugins because basically composer plugins can technically change anything on your site. So with our idea of like trying to move only stage, only your composer managed code, the idea that most most composer plugins basically blow that idea of the water because everything is now composer managed, potentially. Uh, we do allow certain composer plugins and composer patches is one of them. Uh, we have a couple, like we have a check to just make sure that you're, you have the setting on, which I think is the default setting, but that you're, the composer command will fail if composer patches if the patch does not apply. Okay. So we can't have you like, oh well that patch didn't apply, no worries, we'll just update your site anyways. The other thing is we don't allow you to install composer patches or uninst uninstall composer patches in the staged copy because if you uninstall it you may have had a lot of patches that now don't apply. So you do it before you restart that process? That's a, a sort of outside of, yeah. You have to have it on in both cases. You can't mess with it, really, basically. Um, so an example of the event system is we have the pending updates validator, and basically that listens to pre-create. It'll flag an error if update.php needs to be run, and it prevents the stage copy from even being created. Uh, basically, you shouldn't be trying to you know run operations if you haven't run the previous update.php. Um, and that goes back to the thing we had. Oh, were you going to say something? No. Okay. Uh, so the other case of, in the event system where I talked previously about the uh, simultaneous changes, where basically we want to prevent uh, somebody from running composer commands at the same time that you're trying to use package manager. Um, there's a how we do that is there's a lock file validator, and it basically during the pre-create event it stores a hash of your composer lock file. And then during pre-require and pre-apply, we check to see, okay, has your lock file changed at all? Um, has the active lock file changed? And if it has, that means that your staged copy is no longer the starting point, is no longer the same as what's in your current active site. Um, so we basically say, okay, you can't proceed on. Uh, yeah. So... Basically, the event system is the way that you would, you know, customize either project browser, automatic updates, or anything else that uses package manager. Um, basically, you can prevent things from happening different from uh, based on different custom conditions, and you can perform custom operations at the start and end of the lifecycle. Um, you know, one thing that I don't know anybody's ever. One thing that would be possible is if you did have like a writable file system, if you could ping something in your system to say, okay, I'm about to perform an update, you know, set it to temporarily to a writable state and then afterwards. Um, but that's something that just would be custom code. We're just providing you a, an event to, to know when, when stuff is starting and when stuff is stopping. Um, so we'll go over some system requirements and limitations, some of which we've already talked about. Uh, writable file system, we change your code base, so obviously if we're changing it, it has to be writable. Um, so it's not going to work on some hosting providers. We're sort of targeting the long tail of Drupal sites. We're without maybe full-time devs and running on lower price hosting. Um, so what if production isn't writable? Um, you could do some of these operations in uh, the local development environment. You could create a temporary writable environment. Um, at Aqua, we have this cloud IDEs, and those are writable environments. Um, so for some package manager operations, that might make sense. 
Um, theoretically, you could use the event subscribers to make it writable, but I don't think anybody's actually done that. Um, it's not version control aware, so a lot of, um, if you're doing it locally, obviously, uh, you can handle that, but if you were out on production, you would need to take that into account what you're going to do version control. You know, so version control uh, workflow is really dependent on different organizations and developers, so uh, there's not in scope right now for Core to take that on and say this is, you know, we're going to commit your code. Um, you could write a module that, that uses our events to, to commit code or maybe tag code before it starts. Um, right now we don't support multi-sites and basically the idea is that we lock down your site when composer operations when we're actually applying say your update. Um, so we don't allow you to install or uninstall modules at the very time that we're copying your code over. Um, so if we wanted to prevent that across all of your multi-sites, we'd have to have some sort of locking system where every site knew, like, okay, an update is happening to your code base on site X and site, you know, A through Z have to be aware of that. So right now, um, that's not supported. It would also require you to run database updates on all of these sites um, when we run your code base. Um, you could prevent this, you could override this with custom code, but in core, we're not providing that ability. Um, so people have asked about this, about multi-site support. When I did beta testing in Portland DrupalCon, this came up, uh, and it came up where somebody was running operations locally, um, so they had a local dev environment, say they want to use Project Browser to install um, modules, Obviously, they know if they're local, none of the other code bases are going to be updated. Nobody else is running it in the local development. So in that sense, it would be like safe for them to use it even though they're a multi-site. Um, but we don't have a, anything checking for that now. You know, Possibly, we could put something in settings.php. Every site has a different settings.php. We could say, okay, this one is allowed to do package manager operations or in sites.php. Um, we could somehow flag certain environments, like a local environment only could use package manager operations. Um, yeah, so, but as the MVP, we're not, we're not supporting that. Um, we used to not support symlinks, but that, is that This not? got fixed in the last hour. Yay. So that was a real, like, um, problematic point for um, a lot of sites. A lot of when we did beta testing, Drush had symlinks inside the, to its, mm -hmm. own, its own files and we didn't support that. Um, so now we support that, so. The one thing I would mention about that is yeah. it's mostly supported. There yeah. are some situations where symlinks still don't work like anybody on Windows, uh, you have my condolences, or like hard links and stuff like that, but and I think most common situations it'll work. And links outside of the code base we don't support, because if yeah. you have a staged copy, but then there's something that links to something that is an absolute link somewhere outside of that staged copy, you can't do file operations in that because that would, it's not staged anymore. Um, it's not isolated. Um, okay, so we're just gonna talk about using package manager in production versus dev environments. Um, obviously for the automatic update use case of like having updates happening during cron, that is more a production use case. Um, the cons are it's not version control friendly, your file system has to be writable. You can't do A-B testing, you can't say, okay, what does it look like um, with the changes and then what does it look like without the changes. Um, for a development environment, like project browser is obviously something that would work really well in a development environment. Like you're starting your site, you're doing site building tasks, you want to start and install modules, um, but maybe you don't like compose, dealing with Composer directly. Um, obviously, if it's on your local environment, you can handle version control there, how, however you currently do it. Um, you can test changes, it's not happening on production. Um, this could be local host, like actual local on your laptop, or it could be a special dev hosting environment where you're like a web IDE kind of thing. Uh, what's our time look like? 3.15? Yeah. Okay, so this is just, uh, I'm gonna just go to some simple examples of code. Okay. Okay, this is a simple module, like it's called the peak time update preventer. Just prevents you from updating uh, during peak times. 
Um, so this is basically the whole module. I'll zoom into a little bit of this later. But basically, we would subscribe to certain events like the pre-create event and the pre-apply event. And then we add an error if it's peak time. So the idea is like we check if it's peak time. If it's peak time, we add uh, all our stage events, all the pre-stage events have this er add error method. We say, hey, sorry, you can't update its peak time. So we don't want you updating this. In this example, this custom module is like you shouldn't be updating core installing modules on a Friday at 3 o'clock or something like that. Mm -hmm. We have a very advanced algorithm to figure out if it's peak time. Okay. Um, and the other example is we have the Tedbo module preventer. Um, so this is, we're listening here to the pre-apply event, so anytime we're doing the composer operation in the stage. And this code is slightly different now in the current version, but basically the same idea. Just some of the things have, names have changed. But you know, don't take a screenshot and just copy this into some custom module. So basically, we get all the modules. We have certain helper functions that say, get me all of the composer packages that, were, that are in the stage that are not in our active site. And then we say we loop through those. And if any of them start with Tedbo slash, then you just prevent the operation so that you can't have any modules and any composer packages that I made on your site. So. <laughs> So the idea is you can sort of like really customize this with a very little amount of code. Um, and you don't necessarily have to know how all of it works. You just have to know where the events are and then how to find out which packages are have just been installed or on your previous sites. Um, OK, I'm going to say let's go to questions. We're going to be working on this tomorrow at the contribution day. And so if you're interested in helping or Questions, come on by, and general questions. Okay. Any questions? The composer stage code looks like it's also being worked on oh. by yeah, we pretty many much, people, basically, right? Yeah, we pretty much made it just for this, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not like a random third party library. Right? No, and we have an issue now. Those are all that people. Yeah. yeah. And we have an issue now. There's a dependency, adding dependency to core issue now. So if you have object, well, if you're in favor of it, take a look Please at that issue. Please the code, Peter. I would love it yeah. very much if you would review Composer Sages code base. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, it might have to be free time, yes. Maybe tomorrow, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're going to prevent Peter from leaving for dinner on Saturday <laughs> until he sees all the food. He's been waiting for someone from the sec team yeah. who hasn't been involved. Yeah. So. I was just wondering with the uh, you know the, the project browser, those those little uh, descriptions for different modules yeah. in there. Uh, if you are a maintainer for a contributed module, uh, should that little snippet of text be added somewhere? So uh, Chris would pro Chris there. would probably know that yeah. answer better than me. Um, you are you sticking around for the next one? Next session about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe I will. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, the multi site, that makes me think of uh, Site Factory. Yeah. Do you perceive any problems with this in Site Factory? I mean, there are other problems with Site Factory yeah. in the past. But it's, <laughs> I mean, not problems with Site Factory. No, that's not what I meant. It, it's a writable environment, right? So you can't, you can't use it in that kind of environment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, any big multi-site like that, unless you write the custom, I think like in a lot of cases it would be safe in multi-sites if you know the system, right? If you have five sites and you manage them and you know who's making, op you know, if you are able to manage it in a sort of more like organizational way, like, hey, I'm running, I'm running an update on this one and then I will run the database updates on the other sites, then you could use it. There's nothing like inherently, I guess it's just as dangerous as any time you would run an update on the same code base. You have to know to update the other data, run update to yeah. on the other ones. Um, but since there's not a good way in us for, in code, or at least there's not, wasn't an easy way mm -hmm. for us to say, okay, let's lock down all the other sites in the manner that we would lock down the main site, we couldn't sort of support multi-site out of the box. I mean, okay, so multi-site seems to have changed into something more of just a general term. Now that uh, we used to think of it as like the Drupal 
multi no, no, I'm talking about Drupal multi-site. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you're saying also site factory. Sounds like you're running into you're running the same issues. Site factory is site factory is is a multi-site, as far as I know. Oh, well, I suppose it is. I'm still learning. Yeah. 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 And um, BLT also. But Afria is going to write their own thing. They're not going to let you run. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I, I anticipate that Aquia Cloud will develop their own system yeah. for this. Because you can't, the, the whole way auto updates works by default, just is going to be allowed. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. Direct to the I think it's like pack, automatic updates is probably like not for people who have very complex user flow, workflows for updates like deployments. But package man, uh, project browser, I think, could be used in a lot more situations because that is something that makes a lot of sense locally if you're trying to avoid using the Composer. Because, you, I mean, you still have the same problems of getting the code up to the environments. Mm -hmm. um, also, like, I'm sure, like, Acquia and other hosting providers will sometimes have a writable system like a cloud IDE where you actually can write the code. And that might not be obviously not useful in the sense of automatically updating your site because it's if you have to open that web IDE, that's you know that's not unattended by definition. But package manager itself, like project browser, you could use that to install modules, or you could use it to be like, okay, I'm going to have this dev environment, this cloud dev environment that I'm going to manually update my modules through. Uh, once we, I mean, in Contrib, we have the UI for updating. Uh, we have an experimental module for updating like modules and themes. But eventually, when that would hopefully get into core, you could also do that in a web IDE. But that's specifically knowing that, OK, you're in a, in a writable environment that you're going to move into production in some other way. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You um, said Windows is out. Is a uh, relationship to well for simlinks. Simlinks. Yeah. Is that a technical issue or an MVP issue? It is a technical issue, and I am not the one with the details. I can put you in touch with the person who is. It's very difficult to detect uh, simlinks in the same way it is on Linux and Mac yeah. and Windows to to okay. dependably detect uh, um, simlinks. I mean. A lot, I guess, a lot can go wrong with symlinks. With the idea that, like, okay, if you get them wrong, if you get the detection wrong, then you're actually yeah. updating something that's not in your, that is part of your code base, but points somewhere else. Right. And the fact that we're trying to do everything in a staged copy, if we ever detect a symlink wrong, we're like, okay, this, we think this thing is not a symlink, but it really is, and it points somewhere else that we didn't know. We're all of a sudden like making changes to something totally outside of the staged copy when we thought what we're doing was only affecting the staged copy. So we have to be like very paranoid about our detection of whether something is a symlink or not. Or basically uh, the idea of a staged operation is gone. Okay. Um, You've answered that yeah. it's a technical issue yeah. that doesn't look like there's a solution to. Uh, I mean, right. Windows has, has Linux yeah. on it every, yeah. in it anyway, so it's really rare that if you're gonna running like actual CMD terminal for Composer, you've already done a lot of work, you know, to get it to that point. So, like, just you could just install Bash now from the Windows Store. But oh, yeah, that's so, actually, yeah. That shouldn't matter. But as long as you're not going to text in links. Yeah. It, it, should, it should be, look like a native Linux in like if it's within that file system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's an interesting so rabbit hole. So the problem, so if anybody's interested in the problem, it is in the Composer stager library. We're basically just, um, Delegating the Composer Stager library to say, okay, are there no symlinks? You know, are this, is the symlink situation good? One of the things it checks for is Windows. So potentially that could be updated later in the Composer Stager to say, okay, no, we know how to detect. Okay, so because yeah. you're you're basing it on the work of the Composer Stager, which is not your well, it's our team, yeah, yeah, oh, it yeah. Is. okay. Yeah. But, but but it is an open source project on GitHub. Yeah. It was mostly written by people who work on the Google Accelerator yeah. team. But there are there are members of the Pete Pinchup project. This is what it's part of. Um, from June one, title as well. You're not nearly as active because you've done most of the work. And I would say, yeah, if it's. I mean, if it is, yeah, I haven't looked into. I we. Yeah, there's this guy Travis on our team. He is probably. Yeah. He's spent many. Uh, 
He probably has less hair now because of the windows, because he's supporting windows. <laughs> he's probably yeah. about 20 years old. Yeah. It used to be when Drupal yeah. was first around, yeah. people working on a Windows machine was yeah. like, what? Yeah. You know, now it's yeah. more yeah. common. Yeah, and you can definitely use this whole system if you're using Windows. It's just the, the Simlink problem in I, particular. Unfortunately, yeah. we do have Simlink. Yeah. Yeah. Unless we get yeah. rid of them, we're... And are they... In, but I think it's like, if they were in your site files, right, that would matter. If it's in anything that we're excluding, we don't care. If it's just in your, like... It's like a link out to the simple signal of PHP. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's right. things you could do about that too, actually. Like, you could in custom code, if you knew the exact path of the sim link, you could just flag it in custom code and be like, hey, ignore this. And then it wouldn't be a problem. Then it would just be like,